Hey, 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 and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. ADHD, and recently I had the pleasure of reaching out and contacting the one and only Sergio Loro. Now, for those of you who have never heard of Sergio, Sergio is a content creator for Assetto Corsa. He creates historic race content for Assetto Corsa, focusing around historic race tracks and some historic and vintage cars. So along with Sergio's passion to recreate the past with his beautiful historic race content, there is also something very special you get when you download a Sergio track. A unique feature of Sergio Loro's historic race tracks are when you download his tracks, you have the options to set up different road surfaces for the track you've downloaded. He has a unique road meshing system that allows you to set up low, medium, high or ultra road surface bumpiness. And it really comes down to your taste, your force feedback steering wheel, or in my case, my direct drive wheel base and my DIY four degree of freedom motion simulator platform. If you enjoy my content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. My channel is all about how to build three and four degree of freedom motion simulator platforms. On my channel, my tutorials will take you through step by step everything you need to learn to build your own motion simulator platform. Everything from material selection, fabrication, electronics to use and what software works best and how to set all that stuff up. That way you can build your own motion simulator platform and truly take advantage of Sergio Loro's fantastic road meshing system for yourself. Contacting Sergio and being able to pick his brains about the way he goes about designing his tracks has been a real thrill for me and Sergio was very happy to hear that his road meshing system worked so well with motion simulators. Sergio began his journey as a content creator right back in 2004. Sergio has created content for the likes of GP Legends, GT Legends, R Factor, R Factor 2 and Assetto Corsa. Sergio uses a system which is known as Vertex Noise to create his road meshing for his tracks and after many years of trial and error he's found that mostly the medium setting works the best for most people and feels the most realistic. But Sergio understands that like force feedback for example, this can be very subjective and it definitely comes down to the user and the way they feel it works for them. For example, with me and my motion sim, I love Sergio's ultra road meshing system for my motion sim and for my CSL Fanatec direct drive wheelbase. I simply crank Sergio's road mesh up to ultra and then I tweak my sim tools for my motion sim to compensate for the extra bumpiness in Sergio's tracks. That way I get all the glorious bumps and dips and undulations in his road mesh without the sheer violence through my motion sim. And the same can be said about my direct drive steering wheel. I simply bring the gain down in content manager so everything is there but without it being too violent. Like I said, this is very subjective and it will come down to the individual and what you like for yourself. So contacting Sergio has been a great experience for me and Sergio is very open about sharing his journey as a track creator, basically what gets him out of bed in the morning to create his beautiful historic content. And I wanted to know things like when he got into building his uh, tracks, does he race his own tracks, who helps him out building his tracks, where does he get his information for building his tracks, etc. So I asked Sergio quite a few questions and he very openly and enthusiastically answered those questions for me and he was quite happy for me to share this in a video for the broader Assetto Corsa community so then they'd have a bit more of an understanding about what makes Sergio tick. So let's go through these questions I asked him and the responses and the answers that Sergio was able to provide. So we've already established when Sergio kicked off becoming a creator of tracks for different uh, racing sim platforms. But I wanted to know, did Sergio himself actually enjoy sim racing? To which his response was something like, does the Pope wear a funny hat? And Sergio's main focus when he's actually playing sim games himself is always in that era between 
the 30s, so the vintage era, 30s to 50s, and anything from the 50s to the 70s. That's the content that he enjoys playing, and that's what he pretty much exclusively plays himself. The next question I had for Sergio was, why did you decide to become a track builder for sim racing in the first instance? And his response to that question was, well, I've always had a creative mind. And when I used to play some of the early sim titles, I would often be frustrated by the fact that there was tracks that I would love to drive, but they weren't available to actually play in the game. And this is what kicked off Sergio's journey to become a track builder. And he did this by basically locking in with other people that had uh, already the skill set to build tracks. And he started to learn from those people and his journey began in this way. To sum that question up, Sergio basically said that he loves doing it and it was a journey full of great times shared with a bunch of great people. Now we know Sergio began his journey as a track builder for sim titles in around 2004 and then he had a break from about 2010 until Assetto Corsa hit the scene. And when Assetto Corsa was released, Sergio was just completely in awe of the fantastic graphics available on this platform. And this is what totally got him motivated again to begin to build tracks and design tracks for Assetto Corsa. And I say more power to Sergio because the stuff he creates is absolutely fantastic. I might add before we go on that there aren't a lot of Sergios out there pumping out historic content for Assetto Corsa or any other platform for that matter. And it seems to me that the developers of our beloved racing sim platforms have completely neglected the historic content. So we should get behind guys like Sergio. So I will include a link in the description to Sergio's F3 Classic Tracks website where you can download a mix of his free tracks and some of his paid tracks. His paid tracks are very high quality, his free tracks are very high quality, and his paid tracks are extremely cheap. So let's get behind Sergio and support him so he can keep pumping out historic content for us historic content gluttons. So my next question to Sergio was, how do you decide to make your road mesh for each track? What is it based on? And what are your tracks in general? Surrounds, signage, etc. What are they based on? Where's the information come from for you to begin to create any given track that you want to build? And Sergio's response to that was that basically his father was an historic race nut. They spent hours and hours at uh, historic race events when he was a child right up into his teens. So Sergio was well acquainted with tracks of the time, tracks of the era in the 60s and the 70s, and he has a good understanding of track surfaces, etc., from that era. So he uses some of that personal knowledge gained from actually being at a lot of historic race events to help him basically recreate tracks. He also collects a lot of data, a lot of historical data, geographical data, old racing sports write-ups, old photographs, old aerial photography that he's able to get hold of, old news reels, video, etc. And he uses a lot of this stuff as much as he can get to basically recreate his tracks. Anything that falls short in that regard, he basically then has to allow his imagination to take over and he needs to envisage what the road surface would have been like from the photos that he is able to see based on the track that he is building. And personally, from a person who has a motion simulator and a direct drive steering wheel, I can testify to the fact that what I get in a Sergio Loro road surface, his track surrounds, the whole vibe of his tracks are totally believable and totally enjoyable to actually drive on. So, of course, this led me to the next question to Sergio, and that attained around time frames. Sergio, how long does it take you to build any one of your given tracks? Now, of course, Sergio's reply was, well, you know, tracks vary from track to track. Some of them are longer tracks, some of them are shorter tracks. Some information is easier to come by than other information to actually gather for the development of the tracks. So there's no sort of hard and fast rule as to how long it takes to build uh, one of his tracks but he could assure me that it is in the excess of hundreds of hours to build a good quality track with good quality road meshing 
So of course that led me to my next question, which was, Sergio, do you have anyone helping you in your track development? Is there anyone helping you build your tracks? To which Sergio replied, yes, he has a very small team of people that help him. In fact, it sounds like there are basically two others involved with helping Sergio get his tracks out there for us to enjoy. One of those people is a fellow that's recently come on board by the name of Tim Mutrin. And Tim has taken on the task of creating all of the replay cameras on Sergio's tracks, pretty much for all of his tracks. So what we're seeing here at Greenwood in Iowa, in the States, this is all Tim's uh, replay camera work and he's done a fantastic job. It looks amazing. Where he's set up the cameras uh, is great. Top-notch job, so kudos to Tim Mutrin for his efforts on the cameras for the replay footage. And the other person that's recently come on board is a fellow by the name of William Peters. And William takes care of all of the signage. So all of the signage we see in all of Sergio's tracks, all the retro signage like this Kendall motor oil sign, the brake zone signs, you know, all the old BP signs, the Castrol signs, all that sort of stuff we see on the surrounds of the course that help with the immersion for the 60s vibe is all taken care of by a fellow by the name of William Peters. So kudos to William Peters as well for his efforts uh, in that area. Now there is from time to time people that may contact Sergio who have a desire for a track to be built, for a track to be recreated and they'll contact Sergio and inquire about whether or not this is possible and often these people are people that are actually quite serious about uh, making this happen so they will actually jump on board and get involved with the process and help Sergio get the track underway. They'll help him do the research that's required to begin the development of the track, they'll help him to gather uh, historical data, write-ups, video footage, whatever they can find, they'll get on board and they'll help. So there is a case for this happening with Sergio as well and he's built a couple of tracks uh, with this type of scenario. In fact, recently I believe uh, one of his tracks, Prinzen Park, uh, came about this way when a fellow that actually lived in the area of Prinzen Park was able to uh, assist um, Sergio build that. He lived in the area. He was able to actually have a look at the road surfaces. He was able to find a lot of information historically about that old circuit around Prinzen Park and he was able to assist Sergio to actually get that track built. So there is a case for this happening with Sergio at different times. Um, so that was interesting to find out about that as well. Now recently Sergio has been engaging in trying to recreate a lot of vintage race history. I'm talking sort of 30s to 50s racetracks which are long gone and which data and photography and write-ups and stuff like that are very, very hard to come by now. So Sergio was very, very excited to find out that in the very near future there is about to be released a lot of aerial photography between the war years. So we're talking between World War I and World War II, actual aerial photography footage of Europe and also they're about to release a whole bunch of satellite imagery from the Cold War period. So we're talking between 1947 right up to 1989 and that will be an absolute plethora of information for Sergio. And he was excited as a kid in a lolly shop when he was telling me about this. So I can see this has really whet his appetite and it's really motivated him to continue his journey to recreate historic race content. And he's hoping that he gets a good amount of uh, imagery from sort of the 30s through to the 50s, which is very hard to come by now. And of course, for me personally, I'm hoping there'll be a swag of uh, new 60s and 70s content. I enjoy that content those cars of that era and those tracks, so I'm hoping there'll be a good amount of stuff uh, in there as well. But regardless, whichever way it goes, it looks like Sergio is uh, not going to be sort of retiring anytime soon. He's got wind of his sails since he's found out about this and I would expect us all to be enjoying more um, historic race content for Seto Corsa in the coming years via Sergio. So I also asked Sergio what sim racing peripherals did he use, steering wheel, pedals, etc., when he was playing and testing his tracks. So Sergio let me know that he still uses a Logitech G27 steering wheel, force feedback steering wheel and pedals. So he's quite happy to keep using that and 
I can tell you firsthand and other people that uh, enjoy Sergio's tracks, I'll testify to this as well. Sergio, you keep on using that, mate, because whatever you're doing is working. So keep going down that path and there will be no problems and we will be able to continue to enjoy your fantastic road mesh system. Now, the last question I asked Sergio was, when you do play your racing sim titles, when you race, when you play, do you enjoy racing online or do you prefer to race with AI? And Sergio's response to that was, he likes to race against AI. He's a bit old school, um, but he has been involved in some online events, which he's really enjoyed. And he has to say that it is very special and it's a great feeling you get when you can actually race against human beings but predominantly he races against AI he's not a big online uh, sim racing person so all in all it was pretty cool to be able to actually reach out and contact Sergio and have a talk to him about his historic race content I've been a fan of his content for many many years I absolutely love racing on his tracks particularly more in the last few years since I've built my own motion simulator and actually been able to really appreciate his unique road meshing system so in the coming weeks I'll be showcasing Sergio's tracks with my motion sim. I'll have my motion sim in the video, we'll have in-car footage, we'll have out-car footage and we'll have a look at how well his road meshing system works with the Dr. ADHD 4 degree of freedom motion simulator platform. I'll also include in the video series a quick how-to on how to install Sergio's different levels of road mesh. Again guys, if you haven't, please like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so then when my videos hit the channel, you'll be able to check them out. Well, until I see you guys in the next video, you guys stay safe, stay healthy and take it easy out there.